Many people, including those who attend religious services and identify as Christians, harbor doubts about the existence of demons among us. For many, Satan and his demons are seen as mythical figures created by popular imagination solely to instill fear and deter people from committing actions not approved by God. However, this is not consistent with what the Bible says. According to Scripture, the devil is more real than many imagine. Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, confirms this, having witnessed firsthand what Satan can do in people's lives on earth. Let's consider what he wrote. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Indeed, brothers and sisters, Satan and his demons exist and are closer than we might think. However, this topic is not often discussed among Christians, perhaps because it is unsettling. Some people avoid the subject, but the truth is that the Bible has much to say about these beings and the influence they wield over people. To understand the power of demons, we must first recognize what they are. Many believe that a demon is Satan himself, but this is incorrect. A demon is a fallen angel, just like Satan. They are spiritual beings created by God, but they rebelled and became part of Satan's army. Let's examine what Jude wrote. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. In this passage, Jude refers to the angels who rebelled against God, in other words, the demons. They are accused of abandoning the purpose for which they were created. About one-third of them were expelled from heaven along with Satan, who did this because he desired more authority than God himself. Now that we know who the demons are, let's explore their powers according to some passages from the Bible. But before we begin, I want to ask you to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you will receive YouTube notifications on your phone. Come walk with me every day. Here we go. First, demons can enter animals and humans, seeking to instill fear, create problems, and set traps in our paths to bring us down and draw us away from the presence of God. Demons can also possess the bodies of living beings. In Mark 5, there is a clear passage about this. The Bible narrates that after Jesus expelled a legion of demons from a man, he allowed these beings to enter a nearby herd of pigs. Let's see what is written. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus repeatedly not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Look at this, brothers. In this verse, you can see that by God's permission, demons can enter animals and control them. Furthermore, demons can enter the bodies of people. Let's see what the Gospel of Luke reports about the situation of Mary Magdalene, who was possessed by seven demons. Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Just as it happened in these two situations, the enemy continues to have this power, so we cannot underestimate him. Instead, we should cling to the Lord, for nothing happens without his permission. Amen. Secondly, demons can provoke mental illnesses. Actually, few people know this, but demons can cause, among many other things, mental illnesses in people. One of the most well-known examples of this evil influence is also found in Mark chapter 5 in the story of the Gerasene demoniac. Let's see what is written. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot. 
but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him, night and day among the tombs. Look at this, brothers. This shows that demons can make us act in a completely different and strange way than we are used to. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. And the book of Matthew also shows us another example of this. Let's see, when they came to the crowd. A man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples. But they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of the boy. And he was healed at that moment. But brothers, pay close attention to what I'm about to say now. Just because Satan and his demons can cause mental illnesses in people does not mean that every person with a psychological disorder is demon-possessed. That is not the case. These people are loved and protected by God. Unfortunately, some interpret these biblical passages incorrectly and end up unfairly judging those with disabilities. Please do not do that. Third, demons can cause physical illnesses. Just like psychological illnesses. Demons are also capable of causing physical ailments in humans, including making them mute, blind, deaf, among others. Let's see what the Bible says in Matthew 4. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Now see what is written in Matthew 12. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man, who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. The Bible also tells about a woman, who suffered from a physical deformity caused by an evil spirit. See what is written, and behold, there was a woman who had had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. And immediately after, Luke emphasized that the woman was suffering because of Satan. And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? You can see, brothers, how demons have the power to humiliate us, causing us almost physical psychological pain. But just like in the case of mentally disabled individuals, we cannot say that every physical disability is the work of the enemy. Okay, remember that. Fourth, demons can deceive nations. This is a power that not everyone is aware of. But it is much more common than we can imagine. That's why in Revelation chapter 16, the Apostle John makes the following account. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world, to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Whole nations can be destroyed by the work of demons. And how does this happen? Through corruption, social inequalities, hunger, greed, and all the other evil things that the enemy plants in the hearts of the rulers of these countries. It's important to know that. Demons will always work together to achieve their ultimate goals. That's why it's so important for us to pray for our country and entrust it into God's hands. That's why the word tells us, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man, from where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, 
and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. Fifth, demons can control unbelievers. Many people who have not truly surrendered their lives to Jesus do not care about the existence of demons simply because they do not believe in a spiritual world that influences our existence here on earth. However, the Bible provides examples of unbelievers who were harmed and even used by demons. See what is written in Acts chapter 19. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul the first know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Look at this, brothers and sisters. We need to understand that every human being is inherently good because they were created in the image and likeness of God. However, as a person allows sin to enter their heart, they drift away from God and become vulnerable to the actions of the enemy. The devil uses people who do not seek the Lord and harbor negative feelings in their hearts, such as anger, hatred, resentment, envy, lies, addictions, and other sins. And, although it may be hard to believe, Satan and his demons are behind all of this. That's why we need to pray for these people and cry out for the blood of Jesus to protect us from all who are under the influence of demons. Okay, I know it's scary to think that evil has so much power, but as Christians, brothers and sisters, we don't need to worry. Christ has all power in heaven and on earth, and he can command the demons to flee from us in an instant. That's why it's so important to follow Christ's teachings, believe in his word, and be faithful in everything, so that we can overcome the spiritual forces of evil that try to harm us. Amen. We must always be alert to the schemes of Satan and never underestimate his power. But always remember that he is not all-powerful. That power belongs only to God. Since Jesus came into the world, the devil did everything he could to defeat him, to stop him from fulfilling God's will. But his plan was foiled when Christ died for our sins and rose again. Hallelujah! So, my dear brothers and sisters, if we stand firm with Christ, we will be more than conquerors. Amen. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. If you like this message, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. God bless you.